right. Hey, I don't know if you need to join me in a collective. I just, I told someone earlier, I don't know if I've ever worked harder to get to this moment right here, right in this moment to preach God's word today. And I'm ready. It's been a crazy week. We could go on about that, but uh, your resilience, our resilience continues to be tested. Someone noted, uh, we've got lint down. We've gone without water. We've gone without food. We've gone without electricity. <laughs> you know, we've done lint. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we're done, and we'll press on. Uh, I say that. No, this is a great season of restraint and, and sacrifice. All those good things that we talked about at our Ash Wednesday service. If you haven't checked that out, you can go online and see it. But I just want to welcome everybody who is online watching. us. hundreds of you right now who are watching us worship me at home. I hope you've got electricity back. It has been crazy. We've had uh, members who have, you know, been without power for a long period of time. Many of you in the room without heat, uh, like us at our place. We've had busted pipes all over. We had plumbers yesterday, uh, no water for a long time. Um, you know, it's, we've been living in the pioneer days. We're, we're melting snow to flush toilets, okay? I mean, it's, it's crazy. And I don't know if that's been your story or not, but just know that uh, many have struggled this week in big ways. And as Megan has noted, often in a crisis like this, it is the most vulnerable who are hurt the most, who take on the brunt of it all. And so you've stepped up as a church, and I'm so grateful. It has been a week. Uh, this, this year uh, has been crazy. And this past uh, week has just been, in many ways, worse than quarantine. Now we're quarantining in 40-degree weather. We've had members who've been in cars literally trying to stay warm. And yet connect groups, and you have cared for one another so well. I'm so grateful. I'm so proud to be your pastor. We were ill-prepared, weren't we? I mean, that's what all the talk is now. We were not ready for this. Understandably, kind of the, the storm of a century, if you will. But we were ill-prepared uh, and it reminds me that often I kind of feel that way in my life. We, we, we know this. If this year's taught us anything, it's taught us that we really can't foresee the future. God knows what is going to come, and he can prepare us. But do you ever feel like you're ill-prepared in your life? I mean, how many of us were prepared for this? And, and do you ever feel ill-prepared in your Christian life? Do you ever feel that you're not prepared to do what God's called you to do? And particularly when it comes to, as Christians, as believers, to sharing your faith with other people, do you feel like you're just not prepared, not ready to bless people as he's called us to bless them? Do you find yourself like me, maybe with some regret when you have opportunity and you didn't take it and you should have done it? I was not prepared. And oftentimes this is the case. How can we be prepared to bless others? Often we don't know what to do. And so today we're going to talk about how we can bless others because it begins with prayer. And today we're going to talk about how we're entering into this Easter season. You've heard about it. We want you to encourage you, please, to go online and, and get your, or if you're here, to get your um, 40 days journal, your Lenten journal, and follow along with us. Because think about it, gang. We have opportunity to bless others as never before. And as the snow melts and as needs continue on, we have an opportunity to express the great love of Jesus. Think about it. What separates us from the world? We have the grace of God that we have received and understand. And now we can give that to others. That is why he doesn't just zap us up to heaven the moment we get saved. Because we're here to bless others. So we have dedicated these 40 days to blessing others. Some of us, I know, like me, you, you, you have wrestled through the years, perhaps, in different ways to, to uh, share your faith. And we're going to talk about that in these days to come. I, I've learned so many things through the years as I've sought to uh, engage people in personal evangelism. And what, what I've come to is much of what we're talking about in this month. Because many of the ways that we've been, t been taught, if you have been taught or you've been guided in some ways to teach or to, to share your faith, uh, our, our, our methods have just been too complicated they, they've been too time-consuming or just plain awkward relationally. And Jesus has taught us that this can be a fun way to live. What I've learned over the years, that, that living a life of blessing and being this pattern of blessing others is actually a thrill. It's a joy to live like this. And today we're going to share some of the things that, 
that I've learned, but that we're learning together along the way. You know, Jesus said in Luke 19, he said that his purpose was to come and to seek out and to save the lost. A couple of things going there. Um, one, he's the one who saves. That should relieve us today. But this is actually, his strategy is actually very simple. When you look at the life of Jesus, and that's what we're going to do throughout this time, when you look at how he blessed others, it was, it was simple. It was, it was through friendship and it was through blessing. A rhythm of friendship and blessing. And that's it. That's how simple this really is. Leslie Newbigin, who's a missiologist, theologian, one of my favorite missiologists, uh, he said this, live in the kingdom of God in such a way that it, prov- it provokes questions for which the gospel is the answer. I love that. I'm calling us in these days to live questionable lives. Because what I've discovered in my own life, when we seek to bless others, it really does cause them to go, hmm, I had this happen just yesterday. I've been praying for my four. That's our challenge this week. That's the application of the message ahead of time. Okay, spoiler alert. Praying for four people, as Megan noted, that we're going to bless. One of them is my neighbor. And I was out, uh, out in the front yard yesterday, you know, taking the, the, the towels or whatever there, sheets off the blankets and such, I mean, off the flowers. And, 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 and he's out there and we started to talk. Uh, and, and what happened was, at, just as I'd been praying for him that morning, run into him, I end up in his, in his uh, backyard, right in the alley there, showing him what I just kind of learned, been reminded, how do you turn off your water, right, in case this happens. We're back there, uh, I'm serving him, he's seeking to serve me, we have a long conversation just to bless him, let him know that I care about him. And then Stacy and I find ourselves on the other side, another neighbor just uh, yesterday, able to pray over him, to, to talk with him about what he's been going through, going through some health challenges in this crazy time, like some of our members and we're just able to pray over him. And you might say, well, preacher, that's what you do. I mean, you do that stuff. You know, you, you, no, no, you and I have been called to live this kind of life. And so what we're teaching you, five missional practices, real simple, where you don't even have to change your schedule, hardly change your, your, your calendar at all, and to bless other people and draw them to the love of Jesus. And, and the five are in this simple acrostic. You can see it there. It, it's begin with prayer. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's to listen to others we need a lot more listening and 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 we need to listen because listening is an act of love we're going to eat with them and if we can't eat with them we're going to just engage with them in some way you know right it could be a phone call for some of you I've been on the phone all week long with people it's a simple way to learn more about where are they how are you doing many of you have done that this week and then we're going to serve in some intentional way I've seen where you step out and serve people in our day where there's so much polarization and so much angst in our culture, when you, when you serve someone sacrificially, it really causes them to go, wait, what? Are you do- Why are you doing this? And, and when we do this intentionally, it allows us then to share our story. The last S really is sharing our story. And in that is the big story, the gospel story. This is a fun way to live. Friends, if we really embrace the way of Jesus, you can wake up in the morning and decide, I'm going to live for others today not myself. And and that's not always easy to do, but when you make a decision, I'm going to bless people today, it frees you up. I've I've loved the kind of game that I play with the Holy Spirit through the day is just to outgrace people. Like, wow, that was unkind. You know what? I'm not going to come back to that. I'm just going to love you. And I'm going to cause you to question why I'm doing this. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. You look like you want to go in this door right about the time. Hey, you go ahead. You go first. That'd be okay. You want to merge? everybody merge all right let's just merge go ahead of me because I'm not seeking to be first here I I, I'm out I'm I'm gonna outgrace you today and in so doing it's just fun to live a questionable life and more people need this kind of life I've discovered it's such a joyful way to live so each week we're looking at how Jesus practiced these things and it begins with prayer But oftentimes, when it comes to blessing others and sharing the love of Jesus with others, we don't know um, who to pray for. We don't really know what to pray. And we maybe wonder why we pray. We're going to talk about those three things today. In fact, you can turn to John 17. Jesus is going to answer all of these questions for us in this passage. This is the passage where Jesus is praying the longest prayer in the Bible. We often talk about the Lord's Prayer, which is really a model prayer, not a rote kind of prayer. It's a model prayer that helps guide us in a comprehensive prayer. This is the 
uh, prayer. This is the Lord's Prayer. This is the long one. This is him before he's about to die a brutal death on the cross. This is the high priestly prayer because the priest is interceding on our behalf. That's what a priest does. That's what we've been called to do as holy priests, a nation of priests, God's people, and we get to pray for those in our lives. Now, you would think that Jesus, I know I would be, be quite preoccupied with the fact that he's about to die on the cross, and he knows it. He knows that, that he's about to be, uh, walk through a brutal death, and he knows what's about to happen, and yet... He's praying for others. Instead, he's praying for his disciples, and he's praying for people who shouldn't even be on his radar, as we'll see here. Often, you know, we, we don't know how to be prepared, but Jesus has been saying, hey, you are sent into the world. You're not of this world, but you're sent into the world precisely because in the world is where you will be seen as different. Light shines brightest in the darkness. And what we often do instead, we tend to hide out from the world or be against the world. I've seen so many Christians who are just against the world instead of stepping in to transform the world. You know, Jesus was known as a friend of sinners. We should take on the same label. He wore it proudly. It, were, it was his adversaries who called him friend of sinners. I can just imagine Jesus going, you get it. That's exactly who I am. And he's called us to do the same. We're not called to, to separate and make distance. We're to diminish the distance. We're called to go and make disciples. And too many of us are, are pulling back in these days when we need to go forth. And so many have done that, even barely able to get out of our houses we've been serving, and again, serving our city, but serving our neighbors and friends. Uh, Like Stacy and I, we've had had people over to stay with us because they had no place to stay, and there's no no power. We've had family come, and it has been crazy. It's been one big interruption after another, but that's kind of the way the Spirit leads. Here's the need. Let's help others who are in need. So the first question, who do we pray for? And then what do we pray and why do we pray? Look at verse 20. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. He's been praying for his disciples. Jesus isn't just praying for the people in his immediate circle. But again, he's about to die a brutal death. And as a result of that, those followers, his disciples, are about to be scattered. They're about to be scattered and each one of them will live lives of great hardship. And most of them will die martyrs' deaths. So Jesus prays for them. But what characterizes this group of people that he's praying for now, they're going to be told about the gospel. They're going to be told about his love through the disciples, okay? And they're, they're not yet experiencing the joy and unity and love of this Trinitarian dance that we've talked about. Now catch this. He's saying that that what we desire here, what we want to see, this unity that he's praying, is is that there's an assumption that there will be those who will go and share the gospel with others. He's praying on several assumptions here. He's praying that there are these disciples will go, and now he's praying for what will happen. He's praying for people in the future. In fact, he's praying for us. You could add us in the mix. You can tell somebody this week, you know, I'm in the Bible, right? You know that, right? I am in the Bible. You're in the Bible because Jesus is praying for us. He's praying for our friends that don't, yet know, that don't yet know him. And so his prayers, catch this, his prayers are future oriented. Are your prayers like the prayers of Jesus? Because here's what we're doing today. His prayers should guide our prayers. Our prayers should be uh, future oriented, praying into the future. Those who do not yet know Jesus, but believing, there's an assumption, they're going to hear the gospel The decision will be theirs, but they're going to hear the gospel and the assumption they're going to come to Christ and they're going to know the unity that he has with the Father that we now have with him. Think about people in your life that don't know him, that he is calling us to pray for them and in the future they're going to come to know him and live a completely different life because they're going to experience his grace. Are your prayers future oriented? Listen, friends, so many of us have a bias towards the past. We, we've got to lean into what God is doing in the future. Honor the past, but don't live there. 
God is doing a new work in the lives of people before us. I see so many people who are seeking to, in these days, leaving a legacy. I get that. If, it, if it's a spiritual legacy. But he didn't call us to leave a legacy. He's called us to leave behind disciples. So we should be sharing our faith with others so they pass it on to the next generation and the next. That's why we've been saved. His prayers should shape our prayers. Notice, too, there's another assumption here. His prayers are are, are that the witness of the disciples will be effective. Did you catch that? Those who will believe through their word. I think we often enter into, maybe we have these promptings of the Spirit, and we think, well, I'm probably going to fail. We enter into evangelistic conversations, they they won't listen. They're not going to listen to me. Maybe because we haven't been praying. We haven't been praying for the power of God to go before us and prepare their hearts. Why is it that we often think, well, I, I, I don't know, or why, why many believers don't share their faith? There's been a lot of research done around this. You know, even still in America, 90% of all people believe in God, okay? That doesn't mean the God of the Bible, but how significant is that? We already have a bridge into spiritual conversation. It, it, it's not like we're talking to a bunch of atheists. It, instead, people are spiritual and want to hear more. In fact, a Gallup uh, poll research Uh, reported that 25% of non-Christians who don't know Christ would be curious to talk to someone who is a Christian to hear more about what they believe. They're they're curious. And that number jumps, how about this, to 40% among those who are in their 20s and 30s. And the younger you get, the more open you are. And, And so we have opportunity here, gang, to share the gospel. Here's a real kicker. Barna Research says that 80% of unchurched people agree with this statement. Listen to this. I don't mind talking to a friend about their faith if they really value it. See, here's what this points to. An openness and within the context of friendship and relationship. See, trust is built and people are open to gospel conversations. You've got to know this. We can move in with confidence. So who do we pray for? We pray for people who are already in our lives. You ask God to speak to your heart. And and again, this, this week we were challenged. If you're not yet into the Lenten guide, you can jump in today. You can catch up. But we've already been challenged to find four people that we're praying for. And I'm praying for four. You can pray for more, but I'm praying for mine. And God has already been at work. It's been amazing for me. Look at verse 21. Jesus says that they may all be one. Just as you, Father, and I are one, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. This oneness that Jesus is praying for, this unity, catch this, that he's praying for is not just, boy, I just hope my people get along. I think often we we think, oh yeah, I just hope people in church get along. That's not what he's praying. Did you catch this? There is the unity among believers, but the unity that we have is that we are caught up in this relationship with the triune God. He's saying, I want them to have the same unity that you and I have. One, as he and the Father are one. Can you imagine Being one with the Father like Jesus. What is this oneness? It's a oneness. It's a unity of purpose and it's a unity of love. And he's calling us into this. You see, here's what happens in the church. A watching world sees us and they see that we're united walking with him. We're covered in him. We're we're walking in this unity with with, 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 with the Godhead. And we're experiencing his love all the time. And he's given us a purpose in life. And our purpose, collective purpose, is driven by a collective love that we have found in him. This purpose is to glorify him. That's the purpose of our lives. And we do it together. And we are to make disciples, to share this with others. And this especially happens among a diverse group of people. Because people then realize, the watching world says, well, they're not all the same. They got something else going on. And I praise God that our church continues to grow in its diversity. I remember being uh, at Gatwick Airport uh, in London. Some of you have been there before. But I was going to Africa to to preach and teach. This is some years ago. And and there was a very black man um, who was, I heard, sharing the gospel. In fact, you know, kind of like a street preacher almost, but he's in the terminal and he's, he's, you know, he's people gathered around 
And so I go, I'm curious, and, and so I'm listening to him. I'm like, this guy's spot on. I mean, this is, I always had courage. Like, this is amazing. After he was done, uh, we started talking. And, and so before we're done, he's praying over me for my ministry assignment in Nigeria. I'm praying over him, and we're hugging each other. And I leave. I'm going, that was a brother. Like, we're, we're, like, we're like one. And not because of our skin color, not because we're from the same nation, same family, or background, or whatever else. I don't even know what denomination he was, if he was one. But we knew this. We agreed, Jesus is Lord. And that was enough. And I'll see that brother in heaven someday. And and my point is this, we're united in him. And Jesus says, I want my people and I want others who don't yet know me to be united in this Trinitarian dance, which is the love, the unity that he's given to us. This unity and love that we have is a compelling witness to the world. It's why we don't let other things divert us. We don't let other things, you know, create division. We instead are united in him. And I praise God that our church is that way. Christ is Lord. We should bless others in such a way that they want to get in on what we have and what we're experiencing. They can see it in us. So who do we pray for? We pray for people already in our lives to bless them over these 40 days. And then what do we pray for? Sometimes we don't know what to pray. As we're seeking to bless others uh, in their lives, I think there's three things we're going to see here. Now watch this. First, that they'll be brought into oneness with him. Okay, we talked about that a bit. And then that, that, that they'll see Jesus for who he really is and that they'll know how much God loves them. Okay, watch this. Look at verse 22. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. Okay, so he reiterates that a bit. But he's saying, hey, I want them to be one, the body of Christ, the comp- see, see the, 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 the completion of God's revelation to the world is the body of Christ. And, they, and he says, I want them to see the glory. Imagine this, that you've given me, I've given to them. We've, we've talked about this in recent days. The glory of God is his character, the very essence of his holiness. And he's saying, I want them to see that. And, and they'll see it someday, him face to face. And he's literally praying for the disciples to see with their own eyes the glory of God. And the day is coming. For us to do the same. But he says in the in, in between time that they would see Jesus for who he really is. So prayer is critical as we try to live this life because we can't do this on our own, right? We can't muster this up. Unity is not an end in itself, but instead it points to the triune God. And it's through the power of the spirit in us that people see him at work. You see why prayer is so critical. We can't live this life without a strong life of prayer. Look at verse 23. In I and them and you and me. Okay, so he's clarifying, defining kind of clarity here about what this looks like. That they may become perfectly one. So that, here it is, the world may know that you sent me and love them as you have loved me. God loves us and he loves every person in your life like he loves his son. Because his love, again, is perfect. So what do we pray? We pray that our friends will see Jesus' glory, will see him as beautiful. We pray that they'll see him for who he is. And only God can do this. Only the Spirit can do this. This is a bold prayer. We're praying for sinners like me to see him clearly and see his glory. And I've seen his glory. He's he's revealed his grace to me. We're praying for coworkers and classmates to become secure and content and fulfilled because they've seen the almighty God and he loves them and they've come to receive that. So how do we reveal God's great hope for them? By blessing them. By by blessing them and, and loving them to him. And so look at verse 24. Father, I desire that they also, whom you've given me, may be with me where I am. Now notice this. Jesus doesn't pray that he will, he's already been incarnate, that he will come to them. He's praying that, that we'll be where he is. He's praying that we will be elevated and everyone we know will be elevated to where he is. See, there, there's a, oftentimes a possessive nature of our relationship with God. 
I think it's, we're prone to this, where we receive Christ, we've got this, yes, let's get together, let's all huddle up, right? It's the old, the old holy huddles. And we see it even in Scripture. We're, we're prone to turn inward where we're going to implode ultimately. See, oftentimes churches are, are like this. Let's just, I want everybody, we just need everybody to get to know everybody. Everybody get to know each other. That's a good thing. We need accountable relationships. We need to encourage each other, and we do that well. But a missional church says, no, 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 we want everybody to know Jesus. He's the one that will save them. He's the one who's always with them through a blizzard, through a pandemic, through quarantine, through illness, even through death. He's the one that's with them. So let's not, let's not get so turned inward that we don't reach out to our neighbors. That's what Jesus is saying here. And consider this. We're praying in these prayers. We're praying according to his will. And when you pray according to God's will, he answers your prayers. Watch this. 100% of the time. He's praying for us to do this, and he's going to be with us and go before us. Look at what Paul says to young Timothy in 1 Timothy 2. He's he's been saying, hey, always pray for this is good. And it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, he wants all to be saved. So he's going to be using us to share the gospel. And yes, true love is chosen love. So we we don't make the choice for them, but the Spirit leads. And, And you know this, he has no plan B. We're the ones who will share the gospel. He's leaving behind others who will continue the work. And it's going to be the next generation and the next. Look at verse 24. To see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Again, this is wild. We want people to see Jesus as beautiful. See him high and lifted up. See him exalted. See him glorified through our lives. And yes, that's power and miracles and prayer but it's also lowly sacrificial service that you see that, that they'd see the glory of God through us we want him to be seen high and exalted we want people to see Jesus for who he really is not not as you know a, a kind of political agenda not a mascot for your life not a spiritual concierge but high and lifted up. And only the Spirit can do that in the heart of a person. And this is a freeing thing. Only the Spirit can transform hearts. That's not my job. It's not your job. We're simply to go and tell. And that should be freeing and empowering at the same time. And so, who do we pray for? People right in our lives. What do we pray? We pray they see Jesus for who he really is and know how much he loves them. And then look at this lastly. Why do we pray? Well, we pray because of the enormity of the task. We pray because we can't do this on our own. We pray because we realize that we need the power of God in our lives. And too often we have not because we ask not. Many of us went without power this week. Ironically, in a state that prides itself on being the number one energy producer in the nation. Listen, in him, we don't have a rolling power grid. In him is the power of God and the spirit at work in our lives. But many of us are not praying for the power of God to move. And we're not praying for our friends to come come to him. It begins with prayer. And we have to begin, every one of us, to pray for those that God lays on our hearts. So many of you have persevered through this week as you have throughout the year. And I'm so grateful. I'm so proud of you. Let's bring this same tenacity to an ongoing life of blessing as we seek to reach those around us. Have you forgotten what your mission is? Have we been so preoccupied with all the craziness of our lives that we have not looked for opportunities to bless and to pray that God will go before us? Look at verse 25. Oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know you whom you have sent. He calls him righteous father here. He's the father of justice. He, he, he's calling us to, to seek justice. And our prayers are rooted in his right and good judgment. Judgment to receive those who have accepted Christ, who died on the cross. And a judgment where, where those who have not turn away from him. And they don't receive this grace to, that's come to them. So friends, we've got to continue to pray and we pray with endurance. We pray for those in our circle of influence. 
But remember this. For some of you, you've been praying for people. You're thinking about people in your life right now who don't know Jesus. And some of you may have been praying for someone for a long time. Maybe you've given up. Maybe you've just given up and thought, well, they're too far. They're, they're not a Christian, so evidently it's not going to happen. And friends, listen, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep praying. Someone on your list might be someone that you have given up on. God never gives up on us. And he's calling us to pray for people that are far from him. And remember, you're not alone. Evangelism is a team sport. It takes all of us. It's why we have, it's like pitchers on a baseball team. Some are starters. <laughs> some are relievers. Some step in and help. Some are closers. And so together, all of us together, it's why we do this together. It takes all kinds of Christians to reach all kinds of non-Christians. And all of us play a role. And so we must pray. But the point here, I think, in this final portion of the prayer, Jesus prays that the love of the Father with which he loves him would be what we all experience. And his love would be in us and in those we don't yet know or don't yet know him. And so when we withhold the name of Jesus, we're withholding, listen, pure love that comes only from the Father. We're not just praying for people to get to heaven. We're praying for them to experience and to know the very love of the Godhead of, that, that we experience every single day. And people are living without him, and he's called us to go. And there's only one way, one way for them to experience this love. And it's through what Christ has done. He himself says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. And so, friends, we need to proclaim the love of God. And it begins with prayer. And ultimately, let us point them to the one who has died on the cross for them. He's died on the cross for you. And so, friends, today I'm challenging you. Two things, real simple. One, if you don't know Christ, to turn to him, come to him. And then secondly... Join us on this greatest adventure of life. And let's get focused in on four people and pray for them. Begin praying for them now and watch God open your heart and watch God move as he gives you opportunity to bless them. We may not have been prepared for the blizzard of 2021, the big freeze, but we can be prepared to be a blessing to others. Love where you live. Begin with prayer. Let's pray right now. I want to ask you do, you, do you know Jesus, first of all? And if you do, would you pray with me for those who are listening right now who don't? Friend, if you don't know Christ, I pray the Holy Spirit would convict your heart right now. There's only one way to experience the love of God, and it's through Christ who alone has lived the perfect life on your behalf he has died on the cross for your sin and he rose again proving that he is the messiah and as the first installment of of resurrected life that can be yours say yes to him now say lord i give you my life thank you for dying on the cross for me i want to live for you experience your love and tell others about you And for the, for the rest of us, I just want to challenge us all to pray with me. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, reveal to me those whom you are seeking to reach through me. Help me to identify them, to name them, to write them down, and to pursue them first in prayer. Help us to be accountable, Lord. Help us to share. Help us to do this together, to encourage one another and Lord, we're going to watch as you enlarge our hearts and as we have opportunity to share the greatest news that can ever be shared that you have so freely shared with us even today. We give you our lives in Jesus' name. Amen.